Hello, everyone. Welcome to Snap Take. I'm Glazer of the Snap Judgments podcast, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. And today I have a 72% win rate Thanos deck for you. I'm going to lead with the deck was not only 72% in about 30 games on my climb to infinite, but is also 72% uh, percent win rate in about 140 games. Does that mean it's going to maintain that win rate? No, that would be the highest in the history of the game. But this deck is absolutely incredible. No one's talking about it. You need to try it. In addition, we have my other favorite Thanos deck. I know we talked about Lambie's Thanos deck and Quinny's deck last week. Those decks are great. They have great win rates. I'm not telling you not to play them. Either one is my favorite. We have a Thanos Pure Destroy running Phoenix. No extra jank. The deck is sick. We're going to talk about that deck as well. But before we get there, I want to show you this article from Marvel Snap Zone. Bye, yours truly. Every week on Saturday, I release an article called Sleeper Decks of the Week. In it are all the videos from this very YouTube channel. Now, I don't really do gameplay videos. I don't have enough time for it. I write eight articles a week, do uh, five videos a week, and a two-plus-hour podcast. So time is limited. However, every deck goes here and as you scroll down you will see for every single deck or almost every single deck a gameplay video made by one of our friends one of our favorite marvel snap content creators so if you're looking for gameplay with these decks make sure you check out marvel snap zone in addition before we go any further i'd like to ask you to subscribe about 40 percent of you which is a decent rate for a channel of our size are subscribed thank you so much i appreciate you but if you're not you're going to get two great decks every single weekday from here. Decks that can help you stay ahead of the meta. Decks that can help you get to infinite, win infinity tickets, and then close out infinity. And I'm going to get them to you before the meta knows what hit it. We found the Darkhawk stats deck before anyone else. We've found the destroy that was so powerful in early conquest before anyone else. We've done this with an absolute ton of decks. We bring them to you before anyone else. We've got a great week of decks planned for you this week. Make sure you sub. Those of you who are subbed, we appreciate you too. Thank you. Don't think you're forgotten. You can help us out more by liking and commenting this video. Help us out with that YouTube algorithm. We're all doing our best here to bring you good content. Please show some love. All right. We are next going to get over to the deck. The first deck, this is the deck I hit infinite with. It is a Thanos control deck. This will also be the deck of the day over on Marvel Snap Zone. This deck is absolutely sick. I, I'm a simple, simple man. I see a 72% win Thanos deck. I go play it. Thanos has always been my favorite. My favorite deck in the game ever was the Valhalla version that Lambie made, which was uh, fairly similar to this, but running Valkyrie in one of the five drop spots and running one less six. This deck feels like a descendant of that one. What it's ultimately trying to do is play a bunch of early power, get a bunch of early power out. Killmonger is here for the bounce matchup and to make sure that you actually don't kill yourself on board space. Spider-Ham is to kill one of their big things. And Jeff is to work with two of the five drops. Um, you also have Wave. Wave here can be a bounce counter. That is a perfectly fine play if you can see that bounce isn't really expecting it and they're not planning to go off or they don't have all of their pieces to go off so you know they're going to play less on turn five. Wave on five is still a good way to stop the deck when you catch it at unawares. Now, the other use for wave is on turn four, you can wait, uh, sorry, on turn three, you can wave and get out a five or six. It's really nice to get out an early Thanos, Doom, or early or Devil Dino if you don't think they have Shang-Chi. In addition, you can get out an early Professor X if you know there's a lane that that's safe to do so in. It's really, really nice when you think they're going to play Doom, but you have priority. You can call the lane they're going to Doom in and lock one of their Doom bots out and lock a lane with Wave. Shang-Chi is very often your last turn play. We'll come back to that. Iron Lad is a play that is absolutely stellar. Even if he's a 4-6 that copies one of your stones that draws a card, that's great. A 4-6 Jeff is great when he's Killmonger or Wave. Absolutely no complaints. Even a Spider-Ham's not terrible. Um, you don't always want him to Professor X, so keep that in mind. If you're going to play him, he's kind of here to be Professor X or Devil Dino where possible. Um, 
you want that 4-6 to make sure it wins a lane. If you get that 4-6 Spider-Man, it's beautiful because then you can play Spider-Man there the next turn and you've basically won a lane. Um, and if you're not, then Doom on the last turn will often close that out for you. 4-6, um, six, 6 is a starting Devil Dino stats. It makes it extremely big. You don't want to copy Thanos. That's fine. No stress. Copying Doom is still pretty good. That's 14 power from your... Um, you basically want to try to make sure that you're drawing enough early because on turn five, you're going to try and lock a lane with Professor X or Spider-Man. Uh, Jeff is here specific, particularly because you really, really want to win that lane with that particular version of the deck. If you didn't wave into it, you're going to do it and then drop Jeff into it. Very often, the last play of the game is something like Jeff and Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi wins a lane, Jeff takes you over the top in the other lane, and you've had a great win. Another possibility is wave into Devil Dino, then you lock one lane and play something like the Mind Stone last time to really pump that Dino up beyond what they were counting on. These are excellent ways to, again, lock up a game. Doom is very rarely just the play on six, but it's not impossible. A six, uh, six thirteen isn't what it isn't six fifteen, but you can tell when it'll win the game. Very often opponents will be playing something like bounce that can't get into certain locations. If you've locked up a location, Doom is then game winning. This deck has play into absolutely everything. Um, players of Bounce and players of the High Evolutionary Lockdown know that Bounce does not love having a lane closed off. And if you can find the right lane to Professor X or Spider-Man, you often win that one. And from there, you're using cards, um, your bigger cards, to try and steal another lane. Very often, if you've managed to Killmonger to kill a couple of things, Devil Dino with enough stones can be big enough to win. Or if you can predict right and you're losing priority, not always impossible, Shang-Chi is amazing. Spider-Ham is really good here. It takes away one of their big things, ideally Iron Man from those bounce decks, ideally something like Doom from the High Evolutionary decks, and gives you a lot of power in the process. If I were not running Spider-Ham, I would run one more three drop, I think. You can, you can include Iceman just fine. But I think the card I'd like to try out here is Shadow King as sort of a backup Shang-Chi who will um, lower the power of opponents, bishops, and Angela's automatic. I'm going to tell you straight up, this deck isn't easy into the lockdown matchup, and it's not easy into the destroy matchup. Both of those can be challenging. For the destroy matchup, your job is to read where they want to destroy things, and that's where your Spider-Man and Professor X go. Even if you end up losing that lane at the end of the day, excuse me, them not being able to destroy them will fundamentally usually rob them of enough power to win. Against lockdown, you need to draw like absolute mad for Reality Stone. If you can Reality Stone their Stormed location, a lot of their deck falls apart. At that point, your Killmonger gets an extreme amount of value as well. They will have priority, your Shang-Chi will hit their Hulk or Abomination just fine. It's easy to get early advantage if they don't have that Storm lane. And you have the opportunity with Reality Stone to stop that. So make sure you're drawing for Reality Stone and holding that Reality Stone. That's honestly the only super important stone, with one exception. The other thing you can do, the other way you can win that matchup, um, is you can play Space Stone in that location, then play everything else elsewhere. On turn five, if you drop Devil Dinosaur, you can then move that Devil Dinosaur using that Space Stone. Hmm, no, that actually doesn't work. I'm completely wrong here. Um, the Space Stone would go off before Devil Dino would reveal Otherwise, that play would work. I guess it doesn't. My bad. You would have to have it out already, and that would require using something like Wave, and then you can't have Space Stone at the same time. So, nope. Your only real chance here is that Reality Stone, although Doom will occasionally steal the lane, saving it up. Because it's very often possible that they only get that one negative two off at that point. Um, and if you don't have much in the lane, that negative two isn't doing much, because on turn five, they want to play Spider-Man or Professor X on turn six, they want to play Hulk. So they're only getting that one negative two. So if you can get enough power in there, otherwise Iron Light gives you a chance to Devil Dino. Yes. Um, moving a late Jeff over with Doom on the board gives you a chance to steal that location. These are ways to win that matchup. It's not the best matchup, but Reality Stone really, really does do a lot. Of work. And 72% win rate. And I've been clearing early rounds of with it as well the deck is absolutely sick all right moving on to the next deck we have a lovely thanos death build this build is 
one of my favorite decks in the game. I've been playing this. This is my oldest built deck. I made exactly uh, one change. I pulled, I added Phoenix Force for America Chavez. And to be completely honest, I think this deck might actually still be better with America Chavez over Phoenix Force. But for the time being, I switched that up because Phoenix Force getting a stone, very often it's a stone, right? Phoenix Force getting a stone or a Yandu, if it hits something big, is often a way to get a lot of extra um, draw on the board. And draw is important because you really want to see your null and your your goal here is, on turn 5, not to play Phoenix. It's to have killed enough stones, largely. But with Yandu, Carnage, and then Killmonger, or Venom, to have killed enough stuff to make death 2 or less. Then on turn 5, you get the wave and death play. If that many things have been destroyed, you have a large and powerful null, and then null just closes you up with crazy power. It's nothing complicated. So a typical play pattern would be Yandu um, into some more stones, into, um, let's say, Carnage for a bunch of stones, Killmonger for the rest, or Kill Mo or Carnage into Venom on top of the Carnage and whatever, Wolverine, whatever else is sitting around there. The next couple turns, on turn five, you want to wave and then play uh, Death where possible. Again, this might, that might not be the way you go. And then last turn, you want to drop that giant. And also conceivably drop a Shang-Chi at that point or whatever else you felt necessary. Another option here would be on turn three, if you're not seeing things, to play wave and then just get that null out nice and early. At that point, you can spend the, your end game playing a card like Shang-Chi and whatever you kill on their side, the power gets added to your side of the board. Thanos is fundamentally never going off. He's here for the stones providing kill, kill fodder. Um, Wolverine is great because he counts as a kill for both null and death, but doesn't end up in your discard pile for Phoenix. That's why he's here and not um and not bucky bucky was in a previous version for shang chi um i think in straight destroy without the thanos package that bucky is still probably right but for this version in particular i think that wolverine and shang offer more value Again, Phoenix Force is not required for this deck. I remain unconvinced that this deck isn't just better with America Chavez in that spot, but I think it's close enough. The win rate on this deck is really strong. Safety Blade, the genius of Marvel Snap Zone, one of the best deck builders in the game. He's made an absolute ton of your favorite decks, even if you don't realize it. Shared this in his article this week. We've been talking about what we think the top five decks in the game are right now, and he has this one sitting comfortably at number four. So I think that is also worth knowing. All right, that's today's video. I'm going to ask you one more time. Please hit that sub button, like, and comment once you have. It would really help us out. We'll be back tomorrow with two brand new decks. First, I'm going to tell you what I do with Jean Grey, and then I'm going to show you the absolute craziest combo deck I've ever seen in Marvel Snap. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate you. Check out, check us out. Check out Marvel Snap Zone and. Peace.